Hello children, welcome to your online English class. Today we will be starting a poem on killing a tree written by Jeev Patel and it is from the unit Glorious Gifts of Nature. Let me introduce the author for you. Jeev Patel was born in the year 1940 and he is still living. He is actually a doctor by profession but he is very fond of writing which is why even though he does not have a formal training in the field of arts and literature, he still writes vividly and his writings are phenomenal. He has written many amazing works such as How Do You Withstand, Mirrored Mirroring and he has got a collection of poems. Now out of those collection of poems, we are going to do one today. And in most of his poems, he emphasizes on the importance of how man is actually very selfish. What do you think? Is man selfish? And how do you think is he selfish? Because he learns to take everything from nature but forgets to give back to nature. So let's do this poem and understand how he expresses his thoughts about man towards nature. So first you will be listening to a recitation of the poem. Try to listen to it carefully. On Killing a Tree by G. Patel it takes much time to kill a tree. Not a simple jab of the knife will do it. It has grown slowly, consuming the earth, rising out of it, feeding upon its crust, absorbing years of sunlight, air, water, and out of its leprous hide, sprouting leaves. So hack and chop, but this alone won't do it. Not so much pain will do it. The bleeding bark will heal and from close to the ground will rise curled green twigs, miniature boughs which if unchecked will expand again to form a size. No, the root is to be pulled out, out of the anchoring earth. It is to be roped, tied and pulled out, snapped out or pulled out entirely out from the earth cave and the strength of the tree exposed the source white and wet, the most sensitive hidden for years inside the earth, then the matter of scorching and choking in sun and air, browning, hardening, twisting, withering, and then it is done. Now I'll give you a stanza wise explanation so that you are able to understand the poem better. So in the opening lines, the poet is actually trying to make fun of man. Why is he making fun of man? Because man thinks it's so easy to kill a tree. A man thinks that a simple knife, using a simple knife, if he cuts the tree, he will be able to kill a tree. So he mocks or he makes fun of this very mistake made by man. He says, a simple cut of the knife will not kill a tree. In the next few lines, the poet describes how a tree grows. He says that a tree is not something that sprouts up from the ground in a matter of few days. He says that it consumes the earth and it grows very slowly. So what does the tree consume? The tree consumes air, water, sunlight. So it takes energy from all these things and it grows into a big tree very gradually. Which can be compared to the growth of a human child. A human being doesn't grow from a child to an adult within a day, but it takes a gradual process. The same way the tree also absorbs nutrients and minerals from all these sources and grows up gradually along the years. So what are the differences between a small plant and a big tree? The difference is very evident. Because of the years of growth, the tree forms a bark around itself. Now the poet describes this bark as the leprous hide. Leprous means leprosy is actually a disease in which the skin becomes very crusty and hard. And hide means skin. So the tree or the bark of the tree is described as the leprous skin. So he describes that because of the years of its growth, it has almost become like leprosy. It has become so hard and it has become so crusty that nothing can be done to it. So he again makes fun of man and says that it is not so easy to kill a tree. And he also describes how out of this bark some new leaves and twigs are always 
sprouting or coming out with new life. So in the second stanza, we see that the poet is actually giving human qualities to the tree. He wants to make sure that the reader understands how much pain or suffering a tree would have gone through when someone tries to chop and hack it. And he says that if such a thing is done to a tree, the tree will start bleeding. It will cause much pain, but still a tree will not be dead or you cannot kill a tree. The poet wants the reader to understand that even if we try to hack and chop a tree down or we want to kill the tree, the tree still has a very undying spirit. It will not give up and it will try to rise again from the ground. And if you leave it like that, if you don't pull it out from the root, you know what will happen? Yes, new plants will start coming from that very base of the tree. So he says that it's not easy to kill a tree. So he says that in the last three lines of the second stanza, he says that miniature boughs if left unchecked. So these tiny leaves or plants that come out again from the base of the tree, if you leave it without doing anything, what will happen? It will come back again to its original size. That's all for today's class. But before I stop, I want us to recall what we have just learnt. So we, uh, we learnt a poem by Jeev Patel on killing a tree. And in this poem, he expresses his thoughts very bitterly about how human beings kill a tree without any mercy. He says that it's almost like killing someone or murdering someone. And he mocks human beings and tries to tell them that it is not easy to kill a tree and that it is very difficult because a tree has grown into this present state after being there for many years. It hasn't just come up in one day and he says that it has taken a lot of nutrition and energy from the surrounding elements like air, water and sunlight. So it is not at all easy to just kill it with a simple knife. Further, he again makes fun of man by saying that if you hack and chop the tree, then also it's not going to die because it will always sprout up with new life. Jeev Patel tries to tell the human beings that it is a painful experience that we put the trees through and it is high time that we stop. So in the next class, I'll be discussing with you some poetic devices that Jeev Patel has used in, his, in this poem to enhance the beauty of his poem. Also, we'll be discussing the third stanza of the poem. Until then, you have to prepare a summary of the two stanzas that we have studied today. That's all for today's class. Thank you.